Well, that game was so pathetic. We're not going to give you the intro song. That fumble at the end was so perfect. It was so perfect for this game. Like, you and I are both... We didn't even play, okay? You and I are just talking about the game. And we're demoralized right now. This Welcome into so No Layout. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, it is not... That is not a fun brand of football to watch. It hasn't been fun for years, but they had the fake wins every once in a while. Now they're not even getting the fake wins. There's nothing to look forward to. Nothing. Nothing. Like, let me... No first-round pick. They already fired the coach. There's no one else to fire. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's zero, like for this current moment, nothing to look forward to except to be sad. That's it. That's there's not yeah. It. There's not even a young quarterback to like build up. You know, if, at least if you were a really bad franchise and you had a quarterback that you were kind of you know seeing what he has and you have that going for you or young players that you could look at and evaluate for the next regime. There's literally nothing. There's nothing captivating about this. Every time David Johnson runs, it's it, it just like my love for football dies just a little bit. It's that bad. Like why even run? I mean, now he had like two really good runs, but man, Maybe. yeah, he had two. Like that was it. Like at 16 yards, I think was one of them. And that was about it. That was about the David Johnson uh, great positive note for everyone. In the first half, they just decided that, hey, you know what? We're going to try establishing this run game that does nothing. So what's the point? Like, why even establish it? It's so bad. John says, get rid of us. That sounds better. Okay. At least I don't lose every game. I lose a lot of games. I don't lose every game. Uh, Look, here, here. Usually we're kind of a little optimistic. We have a little bit of fun. There's nothing fun I found from that game because I saw I can't take credit for this, but Will Brinson um, from CBS, I believe he is, he tweeted like a lot of Deshaun's numbers come when they're trailing. It's a lot of catch up football. I think Deshaun's great. I'm not saying that. I'm not I'm not here to destroy him. But there's nothing fun to watch about that team. You traded away, if not your best wide receiver, your second best wide receiver for David Johnson. David Johnson wouldn't start. In the XFL. Whoa. Yeah, you're right. He probably would (laughs) Because there's a lot of players on the XFL that can start in the NFL. I don't – look, I like David Johnson. He would probably be a great neighbor to have a barbecue with and, like, chit-chat. Him running for two yards when the time is running out, what was that? Like, they had a chance to make it kind of a fake game, and they're like, here's an idea. First down, let's run the ball. Second down, let's run the ball. All right, Deshaun, save us. Run for nine yards. Okay, fourth and one. What are we going to do? Let's do the speed option and get no yards. The speed option that you've shown before, and of course this time with David Johnson getting nothing on the ground, the Packers were like, okay, go ahead. You know what? We're going to just jump you, Deshaun, and if you speed option out, we have three defenders waiting there because we've seen this play. Jonathan Vilma, who was calling the game, did such a good job of of mentioning. He, He said the Packers defense knew every single route combination. They knew everything that the Texans were going to do. And they were just waiting for it, especially when they were inside uh, the Packers 25 and the field gets a little condensed. They were all just waiting for the same route count uh, combinations. It was bad, man. There's nothing to look forward to. The bye week, which is good. Look, next week, there's something to look forward to. We don't have to watch this Texans team play, David. There's a positive for us. Well, look, I, Sundays are supposed to be fun, right? And, and and Marty Bird, who's uh, joined the show several times, says, as a real Texas fan, I seriously hope – you guys can read it. Everybody who's on here is on Facebook yeah. and not type. Just read it. Um, but thank you, Marty. The, the, the reason is – what? This is this I'm the just best. grumpy. It's I know just, you're grumpy. This is it, why it's so good. It, it's just stupid. Like, there is too much talent on that team. Or, 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 or is it fake talent? I no, think it's fake. Yeah. really good. I th- explain this to me. Okay. This is the part that I am having a hard time with. The offensive line, they've invested some first round picks. They've invested money on Larry Tunsil, some second round picks. They've traded guys. They, they, they've, why does the offensive line, I can't use the word suck, but what's a similar word to suck? They're not why consistent. They're not consistent and they never, they, they never have a good enough game 
where you feel like they're going to win it, right? Like they never win the trenches, right? That's one of the big things in football. You got to win the battles up front and they never do. And the defensive line rarely does either now. So th- that's why it feels it feels like you've put some talent into those positions, but you haven't really, you know, and and, and you're not going to put much talent into this because you have no picks next year in the first round. So you've got that going for you. Second round, you're like, well, anything? Can we start building this up? It's going to be in the third round. So what do you get in the third round, right? Not enough. There's not enough there. So you got to start rebuilding this thing. And I get it. And, and actually, Marty Bird brings a good point. Uh, brings up a good point. Like, what do you Our expect? Co-host. Yeah, Marty Bird, great guy. Uh, great character, right? Marty Bird from the Ozarks. The Ozarks, yep. Um, here's the thing. You have to start rebuilding this, right? So the first thing you have to do now is can you get some kind of draft capital for some of the guys? Maybe J.J. Watt. That's a hot name. Maybe to the Packers, right? Um, Will Fuller, maybe. Whitney Merciless, maybe. I mean, you just have to see what is out there. Unfortunately for the Texans, David, here's where it gets a little interesting. You don't have a real GM in the house right now. You have an interim GM in Jack Easterby. You have a motivational speaker. You have Tony Robbins. Freaking leading the Texans roster moves. Yeah, you know, like the, that's what you have. It's yeah. So hey, there's that. Way. There's that whole angle. So like, what exactly are you gonna get, right? So I would it, rather it reveal. Sucks. Yeah, I would. You got me all excited to watch Borat. All right, and I saw it for about 13 <laughs> minutes. That movie was the worst 13 minutes I've spent in the last two and a half years of of, and then. I would rather watch that movie in its entirety than this game today. Wow. And that movie was terrible. Did really? You watch it? I thought it was hilarious. It was. I couldn't have been more bored and more disgusted at the same time. They, oh, just wait. Lost, it, oh, it's terrible. How long? You for real? Did you turn it off after? I 13 made minutes? it to the daughter getting to the hospital or the doctor. I made it that far, and then I. I, oh. I out. oh, so you didn't even get to the worst part of it? No, <laughs> you it, didn't see it, the dance. You didn't see the dance. Right? There's a lot of promise with the Texans. There was a lot of promise with Kanye West going on with Joe Rogan and a lot of promise with Borat. All three have underwhelmed me. And right now you're starting to underwhelm me too, Raheel. Wow, man. Hey, okay, positives for you. Here's a positive for you. J.J. Watt almost cried on the sidelines. Like somebody told him, hey, you're getting traded after this. Well, he, he was probably happy. There's <laughs> tears of... Really? I'm done with this organization? Yeah. I didn't say what kind of tears there were. I didn't say oh, there were sad tears. I, I just said there were some tears. He's like, yes, finally, finally. Here's another positive. Mm-hmm. I got one for you. The onside kick. Pretty good. Okay. Pretty okay. good. And the next play, the fumble. <laughs> Which was so bad. I mean, he, okay. It, it was Rosencopter again in a different yes. form. Like, that's a gif. That's is, is a gif or jif. What is it? GIF. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Kaimi misses another field goal, which, by the way, I want I, I, going back to last week, there's no guarantee he makes that extra point to make it an eight-point game, by the way, because he had missed an extra point as Are well. Are we still so talking I, about Romeo's decision? No, no, no. I just, I just want to throw that in there because Kaimi has not been good. And this, this, the reason I'm bringing this up is because this goes back to the personnel decisions, the contracts that Bill O'Brien and Jack Easterby, okay? He gave Jack Easterby props publicly, so we got to give him his grief now, too. These are the contracts, like extending Kaimi for no reason, paying him like one of the top kickers. Why? What's the point? Nick Martin, what's the point? Right? Bill well, O'Brien, the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. I mean, and it's going mean, to give be for a couple years. It would be great to work for Bill O'Brien and Jack Easterby because it seems really? like everyone gets raises. Yeah. If you do what he says, and then he brainwashes you into calling the same exact plays three weeks after he's been fired. I'm Some sorry, of the well, play calling today, disgusting. Yes. Yes. I mean, we're just com- – all we're doing is complaining right now. Can we well, Can well, we just – What do you have uh, – I mean, it's nothing but to complain. Like, how would you fix this, right? And that's the question we asked. And if uh, people want to get involved with that, I think the first step is try to get some kind of draft capital for next season. This season is over. I know Deshaun Watson coming out and saying them boys ain't going anywhere and all of that. And, and yeah, we're going to make a run for this. That run, unfortunately, it ended last week when you lost the Titans. It's officially done now. Like, there, there is no run to the playoffs, okay? And even if you get to the playoffs, what are you going to do with that secondary? You're not going to do anything. So, 
eh, whatever. Like, first, let's start rebuilding this. Get some trade value back. Maybe one of the receivers. Maybe somebody wants Cooks or Cobb. Try to get something, even if it's a fourth rounder or a third rounder, because then you can parlay some of those uh, third and fourths to maybe move up a little bit, right, and try to get some kind of talent. Number two is if you're going to make these trades, please don't get ripped off like you have been getting ripped off because the next GM that comes in, he's already behind the eight ball. So those are some of the steps right there. Let me pause you right there. Pause. Because this same staff, minus Bill O'Brien, traded DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson. I know there was mm-hmm. a little bit more to the trade, but that's how and I see And a second it. rounder. And, and a second, second rounder. rounder. Woo. Okay. You can't trust them to make any more moves. That, that's you what I'm cannot. saying. You cannot. Yeah, let them, let them receive offers. Don't go out trying to actively trade offers because if that's the case, J.J. Watt is going to go for a fourth rounder and you're going to take on Albert Hainsworth's salary. And you're like, Albert Hainsworth? What? Albert Hainsworth hasn't been in the league for like five years. Yeah, but we'll still pay him. What? Why? That's what's going to happen. Fifi brings up a good question. At this point, favorite game day foods. <laughs> you know, when I, when I used to do the uh, tailgating report from the Texans game, there was a couple tailgates that I would go and I'd be like, oh, these guys know what they're doing. I'd t- have a little taste, right? And they offer you something. Sometimes not the cleanliest thing to see, though. They, I don't know if they cook their meat to the exact temperature they're supposed to. Did you carry around an internal thermometer? Would you check it? Would you like put the pin in and be like, hey, sir, you haven't hit 148 yet? No, you know, what I typically do, if there's any doubt, I fake it. I fake a phone call and I leave. I bolt. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, make me a plate. Hold on. Hello? Oh, breaking news. I got to go inside NRG. Bye. That's what I do. Um, look, here they're, they're asking for positives. I mentioned the, uh, the onside kick. The positive is we're close to the deadline. Some moves should happen. It, you, regardless who the – if you're Cal McNair, and I like Cal a lot, I don't know what kind of owner he is because he's only been in power for, what, a year and a half now, I guess it's been, and he has made some quick moves, moves that I thought were quicker than expected when they fired Brian Gain, regardless whose choice that was. And I think Bill, even though he should have been fired three seasons earlier, um, I, no, I don't think anybody expected it after week four. Uh, Leo, we're not taking the rest of the season off because we gotta we got to pay these bills. But um, you got to make trades. You, and you know what? Get rid of them all. I like Will Fuller. You're not going to pay him next year, right? You're not going to. So trade him. Brandon Cooks, yeah. Randall Cobb, they bought houses here. They want to stay. Sorry. It just doesn't make sense. It's Turn not those, you. It's yeah. me. Turn Bye. those into investment properties. You know what? You bought a house here? Great. Turn it into a rental. I don't know. <laughs> like That couldn't be the reason. Okay, Will Fuller. I had this discussion with a friend. He's not going to get a huge deal anywhere, okay, because of the injury history and the Texans, why wouldn't you give him like a, a, a mid-level deal to bring him back? I don't think oh, he's I a would. Back, yeah, I would. Because you're not going to – I don't think you're going to get more than a third for Will Fuller. But start somewhere, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like start somewhere. Like, like I, But I believe in, – in, and David says it right there, clean house. I believe you can get rid of almost everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know last week I mentioned trading Tunsil and how dumb that would be and whatever. That, but I was, I'm listening to every offer that's out there. Yeah. Everything. And if JJ comes to me and he's like, please just, you know, get me out of my misery. Kalia took a, you know, a gig in Chicago. I want to go back to that area. Send me to the Bears. Send me to the Packers. Send me somewhere in the NFC. Let me, let me go win a chance. I, look, and don't tell me that JJ said that. All right. Like, cause I know JJ is all about his image, but he, he, I'm curious right now when he's speaking and if we hear what he says, we'll, we'll, we'll bring it to you. What he is saying. Cause the, the madness that we've seen the last couple of weeks at the end of games, I mean, you saw it on his face during the game. Yeah, there's no reason. The, okay, there's no reason to keep J.J. Watt if there's a good offer. You can't let J.J. Watt go for, let's say, a second rounder and a fourth rounder or a second and third. You can't do that. I think you got, it's be a first it has round to be pick. a first rounder. Yep. A first and a fourth, a first and a fifth, something like that is the only reason you would trade J.J. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not making a move unless there's a first involved. Yeah, and, and honestly, man, J.J. is not where I start. Because of what he means to the city and the organization, right? There's yeah. a couple of reasons to watch Texans game, the Texans games. It's Deshaun Watson and JJ Watt, yeah. right? Um, Stanford route joining the show. Stanford, man, we cannot find anything positive <laughs> to say about the Texans. Can you give uh, us something? Let me see here. I think that uh, 
we can see that, man, like, you still have a foundational piece in Deshaun Watson. I think uh, we all can agree on that. That's something that the team can obviously still build on. Uh, I saw Zach Cunningham. He made a really nice play. I believe it was on uh, God, one of the receivers right in t- near the end zone. It was a Zoom uh, a zoom uh, sweep. I think it was to Devontae Adams, a lesser linebacker, a slower linebacker. That's a touchdown. I think that there still is some, uh, some bright spots on the Houston Texans team offensively and defensively. Um, but we all know that the Green Bay Packers are a good team. They're five and one for no, uh, clearly for, uh, for, for many reasons. So I think to go and just think that the, you know, it is doomsday and that there's no bright spots at all. I think that might be a little bit of a stretch, but I definitely see what you're saying, David. It is something they need to go ahead and get fixed, but you still do have pieces on this team. Stan, this is where I struggle. It's not like I expected them to beat the Packers. I just think when I watch the product on the field, it upsets me that they run the ball consistently with a guy who gets a yard and a half per carry. Uh, the, <laughs> the way that the, the fourth and one doing the speed option, it's just not the right play call. It's uh, just the, falling behind in almost every game, 21-0. And then the fake, oh, my gosh, you're really getting back in it. It's 21-7. Yay. They get, yeah, I mean, the damage has already been done. You know what I'm saying? Like That's where I struggle with it. I think that uh, I think that's more on the play calling more so than anything. You still have, I believe it was against the Jacksonville Jaguars. They came out first play of the game. They went up top. top I believe it was either Will Fuller or uh, or Kenny Stills. I'm not sure, but that's what I'm talking about. With a guy like Deshaun Watson, he loves to sling that pill. We all know that. So he likes the four and five wide, like when he was back at Clemson. You got to allow him to be in those types of situations so he can be at his most effective and the most comfortable rather than having this water down, run the ball on first down, run the ball on second down, on third down, try to have everything that's short, quick passes, things like that. That's not conducive to his skill set. We all know that. And I think that when you really look at Tim Kelly's play calling, that to me is probably more indicative of why this offense seems to struggle more so than the lack of weapons or the lack of options that you have on the offensive side of the ball because you still have a Will Fuller who can stretch the field. Will Fuller scored a touchdown, what is it now, five straight games? You have a Randall Cobb who still can work the middle. You got Kenny Steele, another guy who's a possession type. He can go ahead and get down the field as well. We all know Brandon Cooks is the burner. So with a better coaching staff and with a better offensive game plan, this offense presently assembled – with what they have, this offense could easily be one of the tops in the league looking at a 4-3 and three record, maybe a 5-2 and two record, something like that. They have the pieces. I know it seems bleak because they don't have my man DeAndre Hopkins in the fold anymore, but with these weapons, believe me, there are plenty of teams that have done far better with much less. All right, what do you think the guys are going through right now mentally heading into the bye week, 1-5? Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, just uh, get demolished at home. You saw JJ on the sidelines. Looks like he was. It, it looked like he was about to come to tears there. It was just embarrassing. What's the mentality in that locker room right now, Stan? You want the truth, or you want me to go ahead and give you some piece of the answer? Give me the truth, baby. I want the <laughs> truth. No, nah, let me see. If I'm a young guy, if I'm a young guy still on my rookie contract, I'm still trying to fight for that free agent deal. Then I'm playing tooth and nail all the way throughout. If I'm a guy who's already received his big free agent contract or has already had some years in the league where I'm not necessarily playing for money anymore. Oh yeah. I'm probably already looking towards uh, January. So I go ahead and get the hell up out of here and get back home with my family. So uh, because mainly because once that losing starts to set in, it takes an extraordinarily great individual to not allow that to start to discourage you where you start coming to work every day just from the standpoint of, okay, you know what, I'm in here at 8 o'clock. I'm going to go, we're done at 3.30. Let me go ahead and just kind of watch the hours roll up, roll right off the clock and then watch the days fall off the calendar until I can go ahead and get to the off season and hopefully get up out of here. Stan, and, and Raheel, I want you to also chime in on this. I asked this question on, on Twitter. I'm that guy. I'm, I'm bringing the show from Twitter to the show. Uh, <laughs> how can a team be up, what was it, 24-0 on the Chiefs in the playoffs? The smoking mirrors that we saw last year at times. A team that came into the season, yes, they traded DeAndre Hopkins, which is a huge part of what they do. But go from a team that was really, I don't want to say a half away from the Super Bowl, but or whatever, from the AFC Championship, but looking like there was potential to go there to this mess. How does a team lose it all? This team is not a 1-6 team. 
but they are a one and six team. Oh, well, I'll go ahead and I, I don't want to step on your toes, Raheel. Uh, if you, you want to go, go first, okay. Uh, I can tell you that's easily number one. The Texans were up 24 0 on the Chiefs, obviously, in the late first quarter, early second quarter, just like they beat the Chiefs last year at Arrowhead Stadium. I believe it's in week six or week seven, something like that. But the Texans aren't better than the Chiefs, and we all know that. Teams like the Kansas City Chiefs, teams like the St. Louis Rams in the 99, 2000, 2001 era, teams that had those high-octane offenses, there's times where they will just come out the gate and they'll just sputter from the start, mainly because from just lack of enthusiasm, let's say they come out flat, or they just think that the other team is just going to lay down and they're just going to go ahead and roll over them. So they caught the Chiefs just right in that first quarter. But in the moment Kansas City was like, okay, you know what, let's go ahead and start to play some football. We saw that they went ahead and were down 24-0 and then went into the half with a lead. So that just goes to show right there. But I think uh, to, the, to the question that you're asking, David, when you look at this team, as far as why they're losing right now, that's, I think it's simple. It's one simple answer. It's because the locker room was already lost way back when. I think the locker room was lost half, par- uh, partially on the defense side of the ball when they traded away to Davion Clowney. That was number one. Then I think you lost the offensive side of the ball when you went ahead and traded away DeAndre Hopkins back in March. And then I think everything has just been a slow brew up to this point. And then I think everything really, uh, really came to a head when you had that dust up between uh, J.J. Watt and Bill O'Brien back when he was a head coach at practice that one day when, you know, they got into it apparently from all the reports that I've read. I think that when you lose the locker room, that's when you start to see that type of product on the field because as a player, and I've been in situations like this with either in Oakland or with Kansas City Chiefs, what have you, when you get to a point to where I'm here just to go ahead, collect my check, I'm going to make it look good, and I remember plenty of times we'd be on the field, five minutes left to go in the game, and I'm talking about Pro Bowl defensive players I played with where they literally look at the defense and like, hey, guys, let's just make it look good. We already know that we're going to lose. We already know this is not going to be a, a big day for us or anything like that. But because we know the coaching staff, we don't. We, it doesn't necessarily agree with our playing style, things like that. Let's just make it look good. That way, it's a respectable loss and not a blowout. So that could it could be a myriad of things of what I just listed as to why this Houston Texas team is like you just said, David. This is not a one in six talent type of team. There's plenty more talent on this team to not be one in six. But I think that when you go ahead and you add up all those factors, that's what you get. I'm going to keep it simple. I, I I think it was a smoke and mirror team last year because you go back and look at the regular season. Like there were moments it took D Hop beasting in the Titans' fourth quarter game for them to win that game, right? Like it really took special special efforts, right? It wasn't ever easy. And then you get to mm-hmm. the playoffs. You shouldn't have beaten the Bills. If the Bills were yeah. a smarter team last year, you probably don't win that game, right? Like and you're yeah. not even in that Kansas City situation. The Kansas City game, how many times did they shoot themselves in the foot in that first quarter for you to get that lead? Like there weren't some great drives, right? I think there's one good drive in there, but you started on short field as well. Then you got blown out 51 to what, David? 51 seven. to what? Seven. seven. <laughs> Bill O'Brien should have been let go after that. He should have you know? been fired before they even yeah. got on the plane coming back. But Agreed. I, I love, Agreed. I love, I love what you said, Rio, because I, I, I'm a firm believer of that, and I think it's starting to now show with the way that they're playing. Mm-hmm. If Josh Allen was a true, traditional, accurate passing, precision passing quarterback, the Buffalo Bills are winning that game. All they got to do is just string together a few drives – I'm sorry, a, um, a few first downs, a few third down conversions to get the first down and go ahead and lengthen that drive. And the Buffalo Bills are walking up out of NRG Stadium with the win. It's mm-hmm. not some fourth quarter. It's getting that uh, nut cutting time. Deshaun Watson spins out of a sack that I don't even know how the hell he still got out of that sack. It doesn't even come down to that if Josh Allen is more of a true prototypical type of quarterback not the first drive of the game you see he's got what is it a 40 yard run and then he catches a touchdown pass the first drive of the game but actual true quarterback like what you saw out of number 12 that guy number 12 ar just a few minutes ago over there at nrg this is how bad the texans are we're breaking down 2019 on a 2020 show we're talking about the freaking Bills and the Chiefs game and Hop right. and Bill O'Brien, who was fired three weeks ago. It's that's how bad they are. And and 
Yeah. To both of you guys. That's my problem. There's nothing to look forward to. I don't know how many years away. <laughs> There's no picks. There's no hop. There's nothing. JJ's going to be 100. There's nothing to look ex- to be excited about for the time being. And that means the entire 2020 season. And who knows about the 2021 season? No, uh, and actually we'll have we'll have a new coach and a GM here. And then yeah. for this season specifically, at least next week, there's a bye week. We got that looking. You know what? There's going to be positive yeah, vibes we, in the bye we, week. We know that they won't lose this coming yeah. week. Yeah, David, there's going to be a that. positive energy on Sunday. The, the season is done now. The season is done. So what else? I mean, <laughs> like now you just look forward to the GM and coaching search. Yeah. Hey, I mean, let, I, let, I, me I, ask, I, let me ask this. Ed Reed. David Johnson. Who was the other one? The guy from the Packers. What was his name? Uh, oh, uh, 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 Ahmad. Ahmad. Um, yes. Ahmad, Ahmad, Ahmad Green. Ahmad, Ahmad Green. Ahmad Green. Ahmad Green. There you go. Ahmad Green. Worst pickup they've they've had. Like Ed name. <laughs> which which one is it? Ed no, Reed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on whoa, now. Now, now that's a whole different. That's a whole different. <laughs> top, uh, top. Okay. Worst pickup. I would go with Brock Osweiler. Now the Ed Reed one. The Ed, the Ed Reed one, I'll tell you just like this. Ed Reed is, we all know, one of the best safeties ever played a game. He's a guy that likes to play outside of the box. I wasn't with the Houston Texans for a long time. I was with them for about maybe six weeks. But from what I remember from being in, the, in that locker room and also playing against the Texans, the Texans have a scheme and a mindset of we want you to play within the parameters. We want to fit you in the box. And you play exactly what your coverage is. You play what your assignment is. Ed Reed, much like Honey Badger, they are instinctive players. If they're deep third in the deep middle and they see a screen up there to the running back, they're going to go get it because they play off the of instinct. They would not let Ed Reed play with his instincts. They wanted him to just simply sit back there in the deep third, play the coverage call, and you just simply do your job. The Texans are not the type of organization that allows guys to go ahead and truly flourish and play off instincts. I'll use another guy, and I know you know who. I know that you know this name when I bring it up. There's another guy who played for the Houston Texans. He was a little bit of a guy that was that liked to be outside the box, had a few little small minor dust ups off the field. Then all of a sudden, he makes a what a, a minor mistake in a playoff game. Everybody wants to run him out of town. He then goes to the Baltimore Ravens and damn near wins Super Bowl MVP award. If it wasn't for them giving it to quarterback Joe Flacco, exactly. He's a guy that likes to play outside the box. He's not going to necessarily be the guy that's buttoned up all the time with the bow tie, who's always going to do everything right just by the book, like I always say, even on other, on other networks. The Houston Texans want their guys to be from Katie and Conroe, not Yates High School. And I know you guys know what I mean when I say that. So for Ed Reed, I know it, look, I know it looks ugly with the Ed Reed signing, how he got X amount of dollars guaranteed, then he had the hip surgery, things like that. But I think that was more indicative of he just would not, he just couldn't fit into their philosophy rather than he was a horrible pickup, the guy can't play, he's a bust, things like that. So we're answering here, Raheel. The worst Texans pickup has been Brock, followed by David Johnson. Am, am I hearing this correctly? Okay, uh, I'll, yeah. After that explanation, yeah. I, I can't put Ed Reed up there. That's fine. And, I mean, and, and I'm not putting I'm on Green. I'm not putting I'm on Green on there because he was so nice to me. Was <laughs> like, <very laughs> he was so nice. He he was he was the worst with the rest of the media, but for whatever reason, he was super nice to me. So I'm not gonna put him on the list. But, I'll but be you, biased. You know here. what? You know what, David? I will say this. As far as the David Johnson signing, and this is like whenever you draft a guy high that you probably should have taken maybe in the third or fourth round. Is it David Johnson's fault that he got traded to the Houston Texans? No, nope. no, that's Bill. That's Bill O'Brien. So mm-hmm. if David Johnson's best years are behind him, which we all can agree on that, but is that his fault that he was traded to the Texans? He no. didn't sign with. He didn't sign with the Texans. So I think that when we go and we start to when we start to throw out these labels of worst worst pickup ever, worst acquisition ever, things like that, I think that we need to give more blame to the GMs the head coaches, the guys involved, the decision makers, rather than the player itself, because they didn't ask to come here. He was traded here. We no all doubt. know that his best, his best years are behind him. So I think that you put that at the uh, at the hands of Bill O'Brien more than anybody else over David Johnson. No doubt. You could have traded DeAndre Hopkins for 
I'm trying to think who who would I've been okay with? There isn't somebody, right? There isn't a person that I would be like, oh, okay. But I was kind of hoping he would give me three and a half yards per carry, not negative points. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That, that, that's where I leave it. And, and you know, let me just go and say this one this one point. And and I and I want everybody to completely understand exactly what I'm about to say, especially for fans who are watching, is I think that we have to get off of the we don't have DeAndre Hopkins anymore. Damn it. I think we gotta get off of that because this team is one and six. If DeAndre Hopkins was still here, I mean, would they be five and two, six and one? Hell no. No. Maybe at best now. No, would they be two and five? Yes, because DeAndre Hopkins, he's worth a game by himself because he's a great player. We all know that. Three and four, maybe. Four and three, that's a stretch. Nice. Five, I, five and two, six and one is a real stretch. So two and five, three and four, but you're still at the bottom of the AFC South. I, so I, I figured I it out. I figured it out. The Texans didn't trade for David Johnson. They traded the fire Bill O'Brien. That's what the trade was about. So, so in you. a way. Maybe <laughs> That was the only way he was going to get uh, fired. That was it right there. Man, uh, another rough loss. Another rough loss there. Off to the bye week. Uh, we'll see the trade deadline is, ir- ironically enough, on election day as well. So we'll have uh, yeah. we'll have our own little uh, discussion there. So we'll watch that. And maybe, maybe that's what we're looking forward to is can you get a first somehow at the trade deadline for JJ? Like that's what's left now. Awkward silence. Probably so. Yep. All right. Let's fan. end it here. I don't think there's nothing there. There's nothing left on the bone now from this game because yep. there's really nothing on the bone anyways. But uh, yeah, we'll end it here. Stan, thank you so much for joining us, man. All good, man. Hey, anytime you guys want me, uh, want me back on, man, just let me know. Appreciate you, Stan. Thanks so much, man. All right, Stan All right. for route. You guys hey, be look, good. Man, be safe. We we've complained and complained and complained, and I apologize. I should have a better attitude, Raheel. Uh, but like. You know, it's just not fun to watch, and it's fake fun. And honestly, I don't want to – I'm trying to be all poetic and, and stuff, but I, I'm just, just hear me out for a second. Okay. Today's game, I don't want to say is a microcosm for the Texans under Bill O'Brien, but it kind of is. You won the AFC South. Eh, eh. You know, like for a couple years, it didn't really matter. You won it with Ryan Fitzpatrick. You you know, Ryan Mallett was here. You had all these guys, right? You, but did it really mean anything? The Texans are a lot of games. They they kind of have a chance. Oh, they're down 20 to 7. They're only two score. 20, whatever. 21 to 7. They have a chance to come back. But do they really? No. They weren't really ever Super Bowl contenders. Ever. They get embarrassed in the playoffs. Maybe this is all good. It's just like blow it up. And I love Romeo. And Romeo's got these groceries that he didn't buy. He's just trying to make something happen. I'll tell you what, Anthony Weaver, I don't is he a good defensive coordinator? I had a couple people texting me during the game, like, these schemes are terrible. He had a lot of promise, and I think he's a great guy. I don't know. I don't know what to believe. So you know what I say? Here's uh, so on Anthony Weaver. Remember, Mike Vrabel had a horrible defense as well. Like they were out of position, they weren't good. But Mike Vrabel's a really good manager, right? He can manage a football team, right? He can put people in position to win. I think Anthony Weaver shows very similar qualities that he like. Guys rally around him, and he's a good leader of men. That's what a head coach is. A head coach isn't a scheme guy in the NFL for the most part. It's like, hey, can you can you manage everything, right? Can you right. do a great job of this? And who would have thought Mike Rabel would have gotten to the AFC title game? Not many people from Houston because we saw that defense that was not good. I did. I was like, hey, there's a reason why people keep interviewing this guy. is because he's a really good leader of a football team. So I just want to throw that out there for Anthony Weaver. Yeah, and, and by the way, last week – the uh, 12 men on the field, whatever it was, genius. I mean, literally genius by Vrabel, so props to him. Well, guys, um, next week we'll do a show that's probably not too much football-related, right? We won't do a Texas yeah. Post game show. We'll probably interview, no I don't know, Post game. Mary Lou Retton or something, you know, one of the Houston icons. We'll, do, we'll figure something out. We'll reach out to Dream, somebody. We need something good on this show, Real. Something positive. Something positive. Okay, what do you have coming up tonight? How can people watch it when time? I don't know. I'm kidding. 530, uh, 39, 10, and again, 11. Greg will be on inside the game. Um, can you not be the, Bill O'Brien is the best measure? I don't, I don't know if I, I understand that. that is. Yeah, that that's means. an odd time. Uh, I w- I, I, look, I wasn't a Bill O'Brien fan. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, same. 
Same. And you all know right. what? Stan's right. No more looking back. No more hop. No more bill. It's all about the future. And the future is a couple first-round picks. Please. So we're just going to 